Good evening. This is Tracy with Touch of God International Ministries. I want to welcome everyone tonight to the Healing Miracle Services, where things happen in the name of the Lord. Hi, this is Tracy with Touch of God International Ministries. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Um, so if anybody cannot hear me, please let me know, and I will readjust it for sure. Uh, but this is an exciting night. I have a good topic to talk on tonight. And I'm just blessed that I'm able to be on here tonight. I mean, God is just so good. A lot of things going on all the time. But praise God. This is, a, like I said, this is a Touch of God International Ministries. Healing Miracle Services. I get to do this once a month. So join me. And join me live as I do this great teaching. This teaching that the, what's the, one of the things I want to say is that some of my teaching I'm going to be touching on tonight is out of the more excellent way by Henry Wright. That's where I received a lot of my healing. And what they and I'm going to be talking about that tonight. Like one of the scriptures I want to start out with in Psalms 103 says, Who forgives all of our iniquities and he heals us of all of our diseases? That is God's desire for each and every one of us, is to bring healing to our body, cells, and spirit. That's his desire. You know, our salvation is unconditional. Again, this the scripture I'm going to be standing on. Be a lot of scriptures I'll be speaking out of. Is it? And the book that I'm going to be teaching from a little bit, just in parts of it. But I, I've been trained by him, and this is what this ministry is based on. It is a more excellent way. I don't know if you can see it because of the lighting. A more excellent way by Henry Wright. When I was there, I received so many healings back in 2005 and I teach his stuff and it's not a popular teaching because we've forgotten about sanctification today you don't hear about sanctification salvation is a free gift but there are conditions to healing so when someone and yes the Lord will heal by laying of hands but when somebody does not get healed then there's usually a spiritual root. There's a cause and effect that's causing that person to be sick. And that's what I try to do. I look at the spiritual roots. I dig for it. That's why people that fill out their forms, it's it's pretty lengthy forms. And it takes a lot of time. I tell people to expect two to four hours, depending how much trouble with it. You can't skip any questions or it won't go through. So, you know, in the Old Testament, the people were raised from the dead. People were healed. And many other miracles did take place. In the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, we found there was even a better covenant for today. So that is God's desire. When we read uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God for your whole spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you what, the way our world is going, it's like the coming of the Lord could be sooner than we think sometimes. I mean, it's just crazy out there. We're in a different time. So why many people are not healed? Like I said, the word sanctification is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, sanctification of our soul. There's a, it's new and we get saved. When we're saved, like I said, there's no conditions, but we're saved. But because we get saved doesn't mean we're instantly sanctified. What are and what is sanctification? It's, it's using the word of God to renew our mind and break those strongholds of negative thinking. That doesn't go away through salvation. Now, some things, yes. I see people get delivered from addiction as soon as they got, you know, got saved. So, you know, God is a God. is a big God. And he knows what's going on. He knows us better than anyone else. Can you all hear me okay? I hope I, I'm coming in and clear. Another scripture I want to bring on is talk about is John is th 3 John 1 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. In health, it is God's desire. The one thing I want to say is that it isn't that He wants to heal us, He, he wants to. We want to, when we get saved, he wants us to be walking in sanctification, renewing our mind so that we don't get sick. We live in, we live in 
and obedience to God's word. Disease is related to spirit of fear, stress, anxiety, acid reflux, Crohn's diseases, things like that, skin issues, a lot of different things. As people struggle with this one scripture that I'm going to read, and, it's, uh, and this is one I, I have a whole teaching on, and this is uh, on Romans 7, 14 and through 17. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. So understand, this is 20 years into his ministry. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, I, I do I, I not. But what I hate, that I do. There are things that we hate and we do. There are sin issues that we do that we hate. Because there are strongholds in our life. And it could be in areas of thinking or actual action that we do if then I do that which I would not I consent unto the law that is good this is very confusing not then it is not one thing you, this is and I want to say it twice here on, on verse 17 now then it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me what is sin sin is a spirit see we're we're made in the image of god we are made in the image of god so again now there is no more i that do it when i do those sin issues but the sin that dwelleth in me i can become one with that spirit of sin did you know <coughs> and i'll talk more about this when i'm in fear i cannot be in faith at the same time so it becomes a sin because I'm not trusting God. See, we're made in the image of God. And God, all these attributes of God, the, the, the fruit of the Spirit should be us as well. Walking in peace. If we're in peace, we're not in fear. We're walking in joy. We're walking with patience. And so on and so forth. All, all the nine, you know, nine things. So people struggle with that. And, and so let me talk a little bit about that. That scripture. It's no more I that do it. When we look at... <laughs> You know, the fall of Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve are both hiding behind the tree. And God knew exactly where they were. This is in, in Genesis 3, starting with 15 down. And I'm going to sum, summarize it. And he says, why are you hiding behind the tree? He asked Adam, because I'm naked. This is what's interesting. Who told you you are naked? See, before the fall, they had a God conscience. The, the, the second heaven wasn't open to them. Satan could not throw thoughts at them. They had a God conscience. They, were, they walked and they were, they were, because they were made in the image of God. But the thing is, we're not sin. Sin is a spirit, is a being. They are the fallen world that has fallen, that project the thoughts in our head. That, that tempt us. Now, temptation is not a sin, but the temptation can cause us to sin if we don't put it out. So we can entertain it, and we can become lust for that. So, you know, people do struggle with that because, you know, a lot of churches says, well, we're, I'm saved. I can't have a demon. Yeah, you can. We all have the law of sin in our bodies. We all. And that's why we have to go through sanctification, which I'm going to be talking a lot about. We have to renew our minds with the washing of God's word. And that's what he says. It's all through the scriptures from Genesis through Jude. He's talking about sanctification all the way through. Paul talked about it a lot. So we have to die. We have to kill our flesh daily. Take up the cross daily. We've all heard those sayings. I know you don't hear it today as much. They're acting like that. That when you get saved, everything's okay. Everything's cool and nothing else. But there, is, we have to sanctify our minds. We still have that stinking thinking. So we have to. I mean, so, you know, that's why you don't, in prayer lines, you only see 5%. Yes, God can heal. It's not always a sin issue. It could be generationally, it could be other things going on. The attack of the enemy, attacking, open door somewhere, you know, however way. We should seek greater healing. So Dr. Henry Reich 
was started questioning God. Why are people sick? And he said, there are conditions to healing. And I'll give you an example of that in a little bit too. So there is a gap between the conversion and heaven in our lives today. More so today than there was in the church that I grew up in in my younger life. Because what they talked about sanctification, they talked about dying self. Today, it's all about prosperity and blah, 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 blah. It's, it's crazy. They don't, you know, they don't prepare the church. They're not talking about the end times, what's coming. You know, you can tell the world is very different today. So, so there is that gap. So we perish from lack of knowledge. I mean, the word of God says that. So the Lord desires to, you know, to heal us. And that we have to meet that condition, sanctify those areas in our life. Disease is a, is a lot of times is a result of separation from God, others, and self. And that is the Great Commission. That's that's the whole gospel that's been written from the Old Testament to the New Testament onto our heart. Love God. If we love God like we really should, we wouldn't do the things we do. I know there are things I'm still working on in my life, but there are uh, a lot of things that I've, yeah, depression, and I'll talk about that a little bit if I, if I you know, if I remember, but it's going to make sense. So the Lord desires to heal, heal us, and of course there can be that separation. So it didn't pass away. Healing is for today. There are people that say, oh, that was for the, for the past, but it, it's for today. It's forever. Why would he only do a short period of time of healing and then take it away? I've been healed of many diseases. I've seen the Lord when I was a little girl. So God sent his son to demonstrate his love. He's, and what did he always do before he started laying hands? Did he teach truth? He taught the level that they understood at their time. I'm sure if, he, if, if the Lord Jesus was on earth, he'd be talking way different. Still on the same principles of God's word, but probably different types of parables that we would understand. His love and power over the devil and disease. So, but, so for Romans through Jude, again, many times it's mentioned about sanctification. It's dying to self. It's renewing your mind in those areas that are stinking thinking. We all have it. It's learning down to it's learning to recognize those areas of your life because those things. See, the enemy knows that's why we put on the whole armor of God, because he throws those fiery darts. We put the shield of faith to put it out. We can also destroy him by the word of God. He runs. He'll stop it. Because he knows that we're bought, there's the body, soul, and spirit connection, the mind-body connection. Our hypothalamus responds to every thought that we have. And it talks to the, you know, it communicates to the pituitary what gland, that, which is a gland that releases what chemicals that need to be released in our bodies. It can put out too much or not enough or just right, depending on your thought. If you have negative thoughts, negative chemicals being released in your body. So that's how simple it is. A, B, C. If I have good thoughts, good chemicals. If I don't feel good about myself, then my serotonins go down. I go into to depression. Do you worry about tomorrow? Have a hard time forgiving? Maybe you refuse to forgive. When it is command to forgive all people, no, <laughs> then he goes a further step and says, pray for them. Bless your enemies. Whoa, that's a hard one. You talk about killing your flesh doing that. We have to bless our enemies. All those that have hurt you in the past, pray for them. When they come to mind, instead of dwelling in it, what they did, because the devil is always trying to reopen that door again. To say, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna refuse to think what they did to me, but I'm gonna take the time to bless them. That stops it. That stops that negative thinking. It keeps that door closed where the enemy's trying to open that door to that bitterness so that he can torment you. We don't want that. Yeah, so unforgiveness, believe it or not, the spiritual roots of unforgiveness is, of, of, of arthritis is unforgiveness. I said it backwards. So if some of, uh, some of you might have acid reflux, don't you think there is a cause and effect? We go to the doctor and they just put a Band-Aid on it. 
acid reflex is usually stress. What is stress? Spirit of fear. Does fear come from God? No. He says 365 times, fear not in the word of God. So we have the word of God as our antidote. Standing on the word of God. An area that needs to be sanctified. God still expects us to walk in that obedience to him. But if we, we're all going to fall short of, off that rock, but he's going to be, he's faithful. And then we repent to him. That's why Jesus is, you know, we died. So we have access to the father through the son, through repentance. And we are immediately washed by the blood and he puts us back on that rock because that's the love of Christ. But he, he's patient. That's his, that's the fruit of the spirit. That's who he is. He's patient. He will wait as long as it takes for us to get it right. Acid reflex. When you're stressed out, have you ever noticed that when you're stressed out, those acid and acids in your body start causing more trouble in your body? You might be programmed with a spirit of fear. Maybe you grew up walking on eggs or something. So those are the that might be an area that you need to sanctify your life. Learning to cast your cares to the Lord in First Peter five seven. We need to cast our worries to Him, so that we can be healed. Stop that. God could heal them, but if the fear is still operating in their life, or wouldn't it come back to on them again? Have you seen people get healed and then they then it comes back on them again? Because they didn't deal with the spiritual root. There's a cause and effect to everything, and there is conditions to the Lord. One that doesn't have condition is, is salvation. He says in Deuteronomy, if and when you follow my ways. You'll be blessed. And then 16 says, if you're disobedient, and all these diseases can come on you. And he lists them all. Unbelievable. So we need to learn how to cast our fears to him. Trust God. Fear projects in the future, and so does faith. Faith projects good things, expecting good things from the Lord. Fear and faith, you can't be in fear and faith at the same time. So guess what? When we are in fear, we are worrying. We're in a sin issue. So those things that the Bible talks about, but we don't really hear it ever be discussed. We cannot be in fear and faith at the same time, like I said. He did not give us a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. What does that tell you? Fear is not of God. The Lord wants us to have that fear. He wants us to trust in him. He toss it, tells it, trust and obey. I think there's a song, trust and obey, trust and obey. Na, na, na. That's, that's, uh, that's out of the hymnal books. I haven't heard that in a long time. Anybody relate to that? So sanctification is choosing to wash your mind with the word of God, standing on the promises of God, trusting God, casting your cares to him, depending what's going on in your life or forgiving or keeping out of jealousy, be content in all things. If you have children, do you worry about them? That can cause your whole central nervous system to be out of whack, be overworking. Not be at peace. And God made us to be homostasis. So our body will work overtime to try to get homostasis. So the thing is we need to give them over to the Lord and trust God with them. Pray for them, yes. But then give them over to the Lord. Don't hold on to those burdens. Those burdens will crush you. False responsibility will crush you. It's God's responsibility. So learn to give it to him. You sanctify your mind and trust God. Fear leaves. When I get fear that starts hitting me, I say, in the name of Jesus, I cast down that spirit of fear. My, my favorite scripture is 1 John 4, 18. Perfect love cast out fear. I'm going to step in his, in his love. Peace comes back to your body when you cast it to the Lord. Now, when you first start doing that, you it's like this war going on. You give it to him, you take it back. You give it to him, you give it, take it back. It's just back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, you'll let go the more and more. That's how our faith grows, and that's how we see more miracles of the Lord, see more healings. Our body starts going back to peace when we let go of it. Okay, I'm going to trust God for this. God is much bigger than this. I need to just let go of it. So then our body is able to heal. And sometimes it's immediately. Sometimes it is a process of your body learning to stay in peace. God wants us to be in peace. 
in him. Some issues of sickness is not have to anything to do with sanctification. Story about the blind man. Wasn't his parents' sins? Wasn't generation? It was just an issue. But lots so a lot of times when when there's these horrible diseases on our children at an early age, it could be generationally, it could be personal sin. I mean, there's a story of this of this child had boils had sores all over her body and they prayed for her and you know they did all kinds of things and she wasn't healing up so they went to the mother and says what are you into well she was living in an adulterous relationship hello uh megan i was just thinking about you today really you came to mind i was thinking i wonder how they're doing we were talking about that church the call you know that that indian church and I, and y'all and i thought like, i wonder how they're doing so the thing is, is that not all diseases have a sin issue. So, and those are the diseases that are going to be healed in the healing lines. But, and there's nothing wrong with going through the healing lines. Go through the healing lines. But if you're not being healed, that's when we need to look deeper. What is going on with me? What is something that's so part of me today? My parents had it and I have it. What's that thought? Maybe your parents lived in fear. Maybe you had a mom that was very fearful and, and, it, and, it, and you, it became part of your DNA as well. You know, I talked about epigenetics not long ago, how they have, science has proven about generational sins. They have proven it. So that's why, you know, if you're not getting healed when people are laying hands on you, that's why it's time to, to look deeper. It's time to, to, to search. Is there any unforgiveness? Was there hurts a long time ago? That's why some, when, I, when people come to me and I'm going to really start pressing on it more, I say, go through your whole life. All the people have hurt you. Did you take care of it properly? Did it paint? Did it, you know, thinking about those things again, was there octane ping? Then maybe you need to forgive them properly. You might have stuffed them or let it or justified them, made excuses for them. But was it, is that God's way? No, they hurt you. We need to be honest with God. They hurt me. Then forgive them and then bless them. Simple as that. Uh, it's not always that simple. I don't take it lightly. Uh, it depends who it is. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a process to work it out. And there is mercy, grace, and love with the Lord. He's looking at the heart issue. Or you might not be there, reach that 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 area of forgiveness in your heart but you're trying to and that's where god is so patient in mercy grace and love he is looking at heart and he sees that you're wanting to make it right and he'll keep the enemy off of you you won't be thrown in the dungeon of torment he'll help you and you'll get there and it's some you know like i said there are some serious issues that happen and it all depends on the people but it's not just bitterness I'm talking about tonight fear discontentment coming out of a how about accusations and, and tonight I'm probably running into some sacred cows I'm touching on somebody's theology maybe some of you believe that disease comes from God if it came from God then why do you go to the doctor to deal with it Again, I said it earlier, authorized is usually an issue of unforgiveness. could be just as low as resentment that builds all the way up from retaliation, anger, wrath, hatred, violence, and murder. Most murders is from, from bitterness that's working in their heart. They became bigger as they thought about it until finally they were wanting to have them eliminated. So when I say... You know, write down, take take the time to go through your whole lifetime of all your hurts. And if you got a ping octane that goes off in you, then there probably is some unforgiveness. And then take the moment to forgive them. It's good to do that. It's always good to check ourselves. Go back. And that way we close those doors. Because when we were young, we didn't know how to forgive properly. And we think it's gone, but it might be down deep. And just writing that, that exercise helps bring up that octane pain or ping or hurt or those memories that you've forgotten about. So praise God. I need to rush this. I'm only on page six. So when you hear that name, take the time to forgive them. There, then that means there's unforgiveness. It could be resentment. Like I said, it could all, all the way to murder. 
Matthew six fifteen says, But if you if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Matthew six fifteen. It's that it's further down from the Lord's Prayer. But if you're faithful to forgive, he will forgive you. If he's not going to forgive you of your bitterness, how could he heal you? Isn't that conditional? When you consider that a conditional statement, if you don't forgive, I'm not going to forgive you. So there are conditions to God, just like there's gravity on earth that he created. If you throw the ball up, it's going to come back down. That's conditional. And John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness i love the old testament he makes us white as snow his blood washes us and makes us white as snow praise god so the consequences of unforgiveness may bind you to your disease keep your arthritis remember we're saved by grace grace is not conditional it's just asking jesus in your heart but that's the beginning of your walk then we got work to do to renew those areas, those, that stinking thinking areas of our life. So we we gotta we gotta resolve those consequences of the sin issues that are you know that are in your life, stinking thinking. So what is controlling you? To drive you. What is something you need to die from? That's keeping you in bondage. We all have areas we have. That's why the word of God is so important to wash us clean. If you know, take the scriptures that counteract that and start renewing your mind with the word of God. Start exercising it. Like if you, have, if you deal with fear of your children, learn to cast your cares to the Lord. And I love the second part of it, part B. First, First Peter 5, 7 says, because he cares, because he loves you, because he cares, the grace of God, his desires that none of us get sick, but to walk with prosperity and health. Prosperity doesn't mean always financially, it's prosperity and peace. I don't have peace over money. So what is controlling you? Some of you don't take care of your bodies. Maybe you're driven in perfection. You cannot rest no matter what. Always busy like Martha in the Bible. Maybe you are a workaholic. Maybe your house has to be perfect all the time. And when you're exhausted, you cannot stop until it's it's clean. It has to be perfect before you can go to bed. You think care God cares about your house dirty and you go to bed? So what is, what is operating in your life? Do you live by a list and you have to complete it? Do you beat yourself up? Do you curse yourself? So God is more concerned that you get that rest and sleep. Because what sleep helps us to regenerate. It heals. But if you're not getting enough sleep, your, your body, <coughs> they're saying now if you get less, you know, less than five hours of sleep, you're, you can set yourself up for a heart attack. I'm not speaking that on anybody. So we need to take care of ourselves. So what is driving you? Is it fear? Is it fear of failure? Maybe this is this is how some of you get your accolades to feel good about yourself. Maybe you were not nurtured growing up. Never got approval, no matter what you did. So you got programmed of proving yourself and everything you do, even with God. God accepts you right where you are. You are loved by him. You are his child. You're a royal priest, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You're a royal priest, a peculiar people. <laughs> Maybe you were not nurtured, like I said. Still trying to get that approval today through works. You never feel good about yourself. You never feel like you let you meet up to anybody. 
You can't even live up to, maybe you got the high standards for yourself that are way higher than anybody else's. And so you're depressed all the time. I mean, if you can't accept yourself, maybe you didn't feel accepted by your family. That's where you have to renew your mind with the promises of God, what God says about you. You're his child. He's the king of the universe. So if he's the king of the universe and, and you're his child, that means you're royalty. You are royalty. Amen? So we don't have to prove ourselves. I love the Psalms. Every once in a while you see this word, sila. It says stop. Stop. And reflect on the goodness of God. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Rest. Receive his love. You can't earn it. It's there for you already. Because the word of God says he loves you. You're, you're the apple of his eye. I did a study a long time on that. The apple of his eye. I mean, he is fixed on you. He finds delight in you, even when we're bad. I mean, you saw you have small kids, and they do bad things. Sometimes they make you furious. But sometimes they make you laugh, and you have to turn your head. That's how I see Jesus. That's how I see God. And when I do, when I do stupid stuff, I just see that he just goes, there goes my daughter again. I love her anyway. And he just laughs. Because I know she's going to get there because Jesus is our intercessor. I wasn't planning to say all that much. So it's taken me a lot longer. We are going to pray. So the spirit of fear is not a spirit of God. It comes from Satan's kingdom. We should be led by the spirit, not be driven by fear. That means we've got to learn how to get out of the driver's seat. And allow God to drive us. Be led, not driven. Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. We should be led more. And I'm speaking to myself. I have not arrived. I have areas of my life I'm still working on. Areas that I've conquered. I used to be very, I, was, I lived in fear. I don't as much anymore. I can see that spirit tries to come on me at times, and I recognize that. Ah, back, 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 Jack. You're not getting on me. I'm, we can become one with sin. So that spirit of fear is a spirit. It's this spirit that comes from another kingdom. We can become one with it. When I become one with it, then I, all I have to do is repent of it. If I recognize, See, we're all going to be hit with the spirit. We're, none of us are going to be immune to any of this stuff. It's what we do with it. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to stay in fear or you, and let the enemy have fun with you? Get mad at the devil and say, uh-uh, you're not controlling me with that spirit of fear anymore. Fear is the number one plague in America. Fear is sin, fear of tomorrow, fear of death, fear of man, fear of dying, fear of rejection, fear of disease, fear of your spouse. Fear of failure, fear of your children not serving God, walking away, living in the world. Fear is bondage, bottom line. You see, God's perfect will is not to heal you. God's perfect will is that you don't get sick in the first place. And fear, even in the medical world will say that stress, that's a spirit of fear, is the number one cause for a lot of diseases today. Probably 60, 70 percent of people in hospitals, maybe less, give or take. It's a spirit of fear. So 3 John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou shalt prosper and be of good health, even as our soul prospereth in peace. Exodus 15 and also Deuteronomy 20, 28 talks about those conditions. God promises if you're obedient, let, you know, what does that mean? Following the, what he says, learning to, to walk in peace. Learning to be in faith, trust, trusting God. That's the creator of the universe. That created all things. That sent his son to defeat the devil. Then none of those diseases of Egypt will fall upon you. Amen. Many people do not understand 
the mind-body-spirit connection, the psychological problems that we have. It, and James 5, 14 says, what does it say? Nowadays, we, our churches are full of psychiatrists. We have psychiatrists on, on board. They don't deal with the spiritual issues. They only deal with the soul. But James 5, 14 says, is any of us sick among you? Let them call the elders of the church and let them pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes further down. And it also says, repent of your sins. And that, I think in verse 16, I didn't write it down. So amen. Am I making sense? So we need to learn to know what those strongholds of our thinking are. Learn to use the word of God to rewash and renew and sanctify. Yeah, there'll be times, you, you know, if somebody accuses you, we shouldn't accuse back. That's a hard one. You'll feel your ins when you try not to accuse back, walk away from it, not join in it, because that's what the devil wants you to do is join in it. Fight back. Doesn't do any good to fight back. It only makes it worse. It only heats it up. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to become one with that other person's sin. And when you try to not join in, you will feel your flesh flip flop inside of you. You will feel that that edge in you. It, and you have to, I can't tell you how many times I've had to bite my tongue, especially when my dad was still alive. He would say the darndest things, ugliest things to me. And I knew it wasn't him. It was the sin within him. Satan was using him to get to me. And he'd say things, um, I just look at him and go, you know, I know who I am in Christ, and your opinion really doesn't matter. It's a lie, because God's word and promises are eternal. My dad's words that he tried to speak over me are not eternal, but I chose to let it fall to the ground instead of let it going into my heart and pinging me. I just forgive him. I just learned. When I was young, he would, he loved to provoke me and many times ran from a gun because I provoked back. Didn't do me any good. I ran for my life. He'd go get a gun. Not, you know, that was drastic. That's drastic accusation going on there. I mean, fist fights, I, I mean, I can't tell you what I've dealt with. So when I learned to finally stop it, this is what came out of his mouth when he called me and he was trying to provoke me one time. And I just I said, I'm not joining in. And he says, you're just no fun anymore. And I'm thinking, accusation and fighting is fun for you? But that's how his family was. That's what he grew up with. That's what the familiar spirits in him were made him feel comfortable. I don't know how, but that's the deception of the enemy. So let's pray, and I want to pray over some of the stuff, but I'm going to deal with all diseases of fear and diseases of, of bitterness, and then we'll deal with personal issues here. And sometimes I can tell you what the spiritual root is to this. This concludes our show tonight. I want to thank all of you for joining us. You can find us on HealingDeliverance.net under videos called Teach Us to Pray School Tube. Join us. Join us at HealingDeliverance.net. Thank you.